Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. And today I'd like to review a laptop that Tuxedo was nice enough to send me. So for those of you who don't know, Tuxedo is a manufacturer or reseller of laptops and desktops and they only sell them with Linux pre-installed. And so they sent me the Aura 15, which is a laptop exclusively based on AMD CPUs. Well, it's actually an AMD APU. So I want to take a look at this laptop because it's very light, pretty powerful, and it's really nicely designed. So let's go into it right now. Okay, so as per the unboxing experience, I received the laptop itself, its charging brick and cable, and some documentation and goodies, a notepad and pen, lanyard, USB key allowing you to restore your system, a microfiber cloth, a quick start guide in many different languages, and there was also a booklet explaining how to use Tuxedo OS, the Ubuntu budgie based distro that Tuxedo ships on their devices if you haven't selected anything else. Now this booklet was only in German, which is weird because everything else I received was also in English, but yeah, maybe it's just an error from Tuxedo, I didn't quite clarify this with them, but I would expect them to send a booklet in the same language as the keyboard layout that you ordered, probably. Now there was also a DVD with the drivers and user manual. I'd expect this DVD to be more useful for people who will dual boot and install Windows on the device. But yeah, since the device itself doesn't have a DVD drive, I don't really know what this thing is for. So all in all, the computer itself was very well presented, very well protected when I unboxed it, there's plenty of stuff in the box. Tuxedo confirmed that every single Tuxedo device will get all of these goodies in the box. It's a good packaging experience, not as clean and not as white and perfect as Apple's packaging experience, but honestly, you get more and you get your device in good shape, so there's nothing to add here. Now let's talk about the laptop itself. At its biggest, it's 2 centimeters high, and it weighs a bit more than 1.5 kilo, which is probably around less than 4 pounds. And it's amazingly lightweight, interestingly, for a 15 inch. I've used a lot of 15 inches over the years in terms of laptops, and this thing is one of the lightest I've used. It's for a laptop that has this kind of performance, it is really, really light. It's amazing to hold. So the build is made out of aluminum for the top lid and the bottom case, and of resin for the palm rest and the screen hinge cover. It feels sturdy and it feels solid. The screen is 15.6 inch with a 1080p matte display. The bezels are minimal, apart from the bottom one, which has the Tuxedo logo on it. The screen has amazing viewing angles. There's basically no color shift at all, and the color accuracy feels good on the screen. Glare and reflections were minimal, even in a very well-lit environment, like where I'm recording right now. There's the sun hitting directly on the laptop, and yeah, I can still see the screen perfectly well. The lid itself is engraved with the Tuxedo logo, which is laser etched. The laptop Tuxedo sent me was shipping with an APU from AMD, which is the Ryzen 7 4800U, which is a pretty top-of-the-line CPU and APU for a laptop these days. You can also order it with a Ryzen 3 or a Ryzen 5 if you don't need that much performance. Mine came with 16GB of RAM, but the base model has 8, and you can put it up to 64, and mine came with 1TB of PCIe SSD, but you can get it up to 2TB as well on Tuxedo's website. So the I.O. itself is pretty good. You've got two USB 2.0 ports, a folding Ethernet jack, a micro SD slot, and a SIM card slot, and a headphone jack on the left side. Yep, there's a SIM card slot. You can use 4G and LTE on this device. It's a standard SIM size, so you won't be able to put a nano SIM or a micro SIM unless you have an adapter. But yeah, you can use this device in mobility situations and basically anywhere using a 4G or LTE network. That's pretty amazing. Now on the right side, you've got your one USB 3.2 port, one USB-C port with full display port protocol support, an HDMI port, and the barrel charger. So the USB-C can seem to be used to charge the device, which is a miss in my book, and only one true USB 3.2 full-size port is a bit of a miss as well. USB 2.0 is being phased out, it's not really useful anymore apart from plugging a mouse or a keyboard. I think going full USB 3.0 would have been a better option, but it's nothing deal-breaking. So my device came with a French keyboard with a French layout, as I asked for that from Tuxedo, but they offer about every Western layout you could ask for. The keyboard in itself is pretty good. There's a bit of give in the middle and you definitely feel it when typing, especially when you're hitting those P's, those M's, like the, the keys in right in the middle of the keyboard. 
The palm rest is sturdy and doesn't give and the lid seems pretty sturdy as well, even though there's a bit of wobble once it's opened. The trackpad is huge and very nice to use. It's fast, reactive, it is very smooth, it is a very nice trackpad. There is a fingerprint scanner on that trackpad, but unfortunately it is not recognized under Linux yet. Tuxedo tells me that one of their developers is involved in a community project to try and bring support for those fingerprint scanners under Linux, but for now it's not supported. It will work under Windows if you're dual booting, but if you're only using Linux, no dice here. Now to finish up on the keyboard, it has some small issues. The bounce back is good. The key travel feels good, sufficiently deep, and the sound it emits is nice and quiet. It probably won't bother your neighbors too much. But the keys are a bit too small for my taste. Now I get why you would want to cram a numerical keypad on a 15 inch laptop. It makes sense and a lot of people use it. The problem is, these keys are a bit too small compared to what I use traditionally. And I tend to mistype a lot at the beginning. After a few days of use, I was getting used to it, but switching back and forth between a full-size desktop keyboard and this laptop keyboard made me feel like, yeah, this is a little bit too cramped for me, even though I don't have giant hands. Now, a nice touch here, the super key is a little tux logo, which is nice. And another little problem is the function keys act as FN keys, not as volume and brightness controls. You have to press the FN key to use the brightness control and the volume, I prefer it the other way around, but maybe that's just me. Now the speakers on the device are pretty tinny, serviceable, they are basically average speakers for a laptop, and so is the webcam. Okay, so this is a very nicely built laptop with a sturdy build, with a nice keyboard, with a nice screen, but how's the performance from those Ryzen APUs? Well, I set up the profile at max performance using the Tuxedo Control Center, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and I measured it using Geekbench, the latest version. This Ryzen 7 4800U got a single core score of 1214 and a multi core score of 6612. So it single handedly beat my Ryzen 5 2600 desktop and it also beat my 8th gen core i7, which is on my Huawei MateBook 13. It approached a 10th gen core i7, which I tried when I used the Juno Neptune 15 in another review on the channel. So it is definitely a very powerful processor. It is desktop class. It's 8-core and it is really speedy. So of course, if you go with the Ryzen 3 or the Ryzen 5, you will expect lower scores, but this CPU family is definitely very capable. So I also gave a shot to the graphics inside because that's an AMD APU. It combines the GPU and the CPU in a single package, much like what Apple is doing with its M1 chips. And the GPU part is a Renoir package, which is basically the latest architecture for AMD integrated graphics, and it performs quite well. On Dawn of War 2, which is an older game but still 3D strategy and poorly optimized, I might add, at 1080p mid settings, the laptop reached an average frame rate of 64 FPS. On high settings, it reached an average of 54. This is all pretty good for an integrated graphics solution, especially since this game is very poorly optimized on Linux and tend to never really get past 60 FPS unless you've got a monster rig. On Dawn of War 3, which is a bit more recent, but not that well optimized either, at 1080p on the lowest settings, the Aura 15 got an average of 43 FPS. That is not bad for integrated graphics. This is definitely into the playable territory. And since it's a relatively recent game, it doesn't even look terrible at that resolution with those graphics. It's definitely playable. I also tried Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p on the lowest presets, and I got an average of 34 FPS, which is once again not terrible for integrated graphics. So sure that's not 60 FPS territory, and those graphic details kinda look bad for this game, but it's still playable at 30 FPS. So yeah, I'm very impressed with this APU. The Ryzen 7 4800U is a very capable device. You will definitely be able to do video rendering, 3D modeling, video editing, and graphics design. Anything that requires the GPU or the CPU to be kinda powerful will be perfectly doable on this thing, even though it's a scaled down version of a Ryzen CPU. It is super powerful and the GPU is very nice as well. All of that in a pretty lightweight package makes this laptop very usable. Now in terms of battery life, Tuxedo boasts 9 hours for this laptop while watching 1080p video. 
I used it for my day-to-day -day work as a product owner, so basically two or three web browsers opened with six or seven tabs each, all opening various web apps like GitLab, like Confluence, which is the thing where we write our documentation on, like our web app as well, stuff like that. There was also a little bit of video watching on my break at lunch and a little bit of lightweight gaming on some breaks at lunch as well. I got to an average of six to seven hours depending on if I was gaming or streaming video or not. None of my tasks were super intensive, power intensive tasks, but it's, I think, a good representation of what people will generally do on a work laptop, and six hours isn't terrible. Okay, so now let's talk about the software experience on this laptop. It's not something that everybody will be interested in because you can ask Tuxedo to ship with Ubuntu, with OpenSUSE, or with their custom Tuxedo OS uh, distribution. That's what I got with the laptop. It's a distribution based on Ubuntu Budgie. I've got the version based on 20.04 LTS and it's relatively up to date and it works functionally. It's a very Windows reminiscent interface with a bottom panel, but they added a few customizations that I'm not sure I'm super fond about. Now the interface itself of Tuxedo OS is themed a little bit. I have nothing for or against it. It looks okay, it looks good, it looks usable. It was translated in the language I selected. It uses basically every single bit from Ubuntu Budgie. There's nothing really specific here. There is, however, a quick launcher in the taskbar and a dock for quick launching applications, which does not show running applications, only quick launch things. I think it's too much. I don't think users need two ways of launching apps directly on the desktop by default. You also get two software centers, the GNOME one and the Ubuntu Snap Store, which I think is a little bit too much. And the distro is a little bit bloated in my opinion. There's Brazero, which is a CD and DVD burning program, even though that device does not have a DVD drive. You've got a MIDI sequencer or VirtualBox pre-installed by default. I don't think these are things that people will need always, and as such, I would have preferred to have a more lightweight experience, but that's just me. Now, the distro itself doesn't have Flatpak support out of the box, but you can add it with a simple command line, and it also ships with various PPAs, two from Tuxedo, probably for drivers, firmware updates, and for the various software that they pre-install, including the control center, which I'm going to talk in a bit. And there's also the OIBAF PPA, the OIBAF, which is probably for updated Mesa graphics drivers to make sure that this Ryzen APU works on the Ubuntu 20.04 base, which is probably a little bit older and might not have perfect support for this APU. Now, apart from that, Tuxedo ships the Tuxedo Control Center, which is a very fine piece of software. So this thing is basically a system monitor with CPU temps and frequency and fan speed, but it also lets you manage the power profiles. So there's a few created by default for power save or for default running, but you can create your own and even select a max power one and even customize which ones you want to apply by default when you're using the laptop in battery mode or when plugged in into a wall. The interface is a bit clumsy. You have to really dig into it to know when you can save and where to click to save. It's not extremely intuitive and the icon is a colored one in the little uh, taskbar panel, where it should probably be a white icon, because, well, that's going to integrate a lot better with the rest of the system icons, but those are super nitpicks. It's a good program, I used it to make a max power profile to do the benchmarks, and yeah, it was, it was nice. Now, Tuxedo also includes one last thing that I found very useful, and that's the Web FAI key. This is a key for web fully automated installation. So basically it's a key that allows you to restore your system. You plug it in, you reboot to the UEFI settings, you plug in your ethernet jack because you need to be connected to the internet to do that, and you boot from the key. And then it's going to automatically erase your whole disk, reinstall the distro of your choice. It's got a little ballot screen letting you choose from every single distro version that Tuxedo offers on their website. So you can either completely reinstall your system, it's a factory reset if you wish, you can factory reset your system with the distro you picked when you bought the computer, but you could also try out the various other ones like Ubuntu, Tuxedo OS, OpenSUSE, and a newer version if you prefer, and it's going to install the version that Tuxedo ships with all the customization, all the software. It's a nice little touch, there's a utility to create your own USB key if you lost the one that's uh, uh, given to you by Tuxedo when you buy the laptop, it's a good utility, I think it would be better if it could just reinstall the system while keeping your personal documents, but hey, you can't always have everything. Okay, so is that laptop any good? Well, as you might have gathered from this review, yes it is. 
The base model with 8GB of RAM, 250GB of SSD and the Ryzen 3 costs 740 euros, which might seem a little bit expensive, but the one I've got cost 1100 euros for the full Ryzen 7 APU, 16GB of RAM and 1TB of PCIe SSD. This is not expensive at all for a 15 inch laptop of that quality and that speed. It's a very well priced device, especially considering that it's not something that is mass manufactured by a huge retailer or huge manufacturer. Tuxedo is by all means a kind of small operation. And yeah, it's kind of worth the money. The APU is super powerful, the graphics are nice, you can, you're going to be able to do video rendering, video editing, 3D modeling on that thing. You're going to be able to play games, indie titles without a hitch, strategy games like Civilization or Stellaris will run perfectly on that, and even AAA titles might run at lower settings or lower resolutions with an acceptable FPS. So yeah, it's kind of an all-rounder, and honestly, if I was in the market for a new laptop, I'd definitely consider the Aura 15. Yes, I recommend this laptop. If you're looking for an all-rounder Linux laptop, the Aura 15 full AMD is probably a good buy. I wouldn't go for the entry-level one, which might be a little bit overpriced for what you get, but the high-end one that I've got, or the mid-tier one that I've got, is very, very well worth the price. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. There's going to be more hardware reviews in the near future. A desktop from Slimbook, a giant monster gaming laptop as well from a new company if I ever receive the laptop. There's going to be more stuff, so stay tuned for that. And if you really want to help grow the channel and support me, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly patron cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!